Hello. Um, so in this video, I want to talk about the question, where do you get your ideas from? Which is one of those questions that writers uh, tend to avoid answering. I think largely because we like to believe that our ideas come from the mystical source of our genius and not from um, Wikipedia. But um, I think it's a really valid question to ask, where do you get your ideas from? And if a writer is answering honestly, I think often there are very straightforward, um, practical answers to that question. So I'm going to run through three methods that you might like to try to come up with story ideas and talk about three stories related to them. Um, so the first story I want to talk about is called Everything Ravaged, Everything Burned by Wells Tower, which is from a collection with the same title. And it's a really unusual story, both uh, in general and for Wells Tower. There's no, he hasn't written another story like that one. And, and, and it's about a Viking called Harold um, who spends his time pillaging and sacking neighbouring villages and countries. And it's all written in this voice as though Harold speaks like an American football player. And it's just a really strange and memorable and actually ultimately very moving story that always makes me think, how did you come up with that idea? And I don't know how Wells Tower came up with that idea, but um, I have one method of creating story ideas that it, it certainly does create strange and often jarring juxtapositions. And so I thought I'd share that with you. Um, I'm going to go to screen view now and I'm going to search on Google for special random Wikipedia, which takes you to this page, um, which is a button that takes you to a random but curated page from the entire of Wikipedia, hopefully interesting pages. And then I've just opened up a whole load of those pages um, with the hope of coming across something interesting uh, or actually two interesting things to try and smashed together to make it to the beginning of a story. So let's just look what's come up. Blue Cha Cha is a Taiwanese film. Wallace Bryant, a retired American professional basketball player. Rose Williams, an English actress. Paul Leku, a village in northeastern Estonia. Dream Zone, an adventure video game. Um, the player becomes trapped in his own dream thanks to a scientist's rotten elixir. Paul Arnold's Almanac, a newspaper comic, Melissa McLean, an Australian filmmaker, Pitt Meadows, Pitt Meadows Airport, a Canadian airport, the busiest in Canada, Santa Rosa, a town in Paraguay, a town in Spain, a geological formation in France, a private college in the Philippines, an association of artists from the early 20th century in London, and an American politician. Um, I've already looked at these, I confess, and I think I would like to write a story about a man or woman, a person who works at the air traffic control in Pitt Meadows Regional Airport, and they are very tired because they have been playing Dream Zone all night long, and they have been having strange dreams, and it is interfering with their work and making them a dangerous employee. And I would do some very excellent research into what it's like to be an air traffic controller and then write a probably okay story. So that's the idea. Okay, so next I want to talk about a book called Pond by Claire Louise Bennett, which is a book of stories all narrated by the same unnamed woman living in a cottage on the west coast of Ireland and um, I'm going to read a story from that, a very very short story called Stir Fry which is only a couple of lines long. I just threw my dinner in the bin. I knew as I was making it I was going to do that. So I put in it all the things I never want to see again. And the reason I've chosen that story is because it takes something very ordinary, a stir-fry, uh, a, a bad stir-fry, which is something I've, I'm sure we've all cooked, um, and manages to 
to take that somewhere interesting and somewhere new and resonant. And so I have an exercise that I do. Again, I don't I don't imagine this is how Claire Louise Bennett came up with that story, but there's an exercise I do every day, which is about trying to notice ordinary things and find things that are interesting that we might otherwise forget. And basically it's it's very, very simple. Just at the end of at the end of each day before I go to bed, I write down something that I noticed that day. And the purpose of doing it every day is to ensure that I end up writing about things that I would otherwise forget. Obviously there are days when something big happens and you think that would be a great story or that would be a great poem. But if you do this exercise every day, it's often about those days when nothing has happened and you ask yourself, what was the moment that was interesting or resonant? And that's when I often find I, I end up writing about things I wouldn't otherwise, but could be a good start for a story. Um, like yesterday, I wrote about, there's a floorboard in my hallway that when you stand on it, it sounds like, it sounds like someone um, kind of coming up for air. It's like a kind of <gasps> sort of noise. Um, and, and when I was putting my foot back and forth on it, I was able to make it sound like someone was drowning. So that's was that was my observation. And I haven't written a story with that as a starting point, but I imagine I could. So that's just a very simple practice, which hopefully if you do every day, you'll come up with some interesting things. And finally, I want to talk about this story, um, which is called Heart Suit by Robert Coover. And as you can see, it's printed on a pack of cards or actually the, all the hearts from a pack of cards. And um, basically the story has, has a set beginning. You have to start with this card and it has a set ending. You have to have the Joker last, but then you can shuffle you can shuffle all the cards in between to make any order. So just to give you an example, let's shuffle them a bit. And then um, this is just the end of the first page running into the, to the pages I've shuffled. The white knight wearing as always his visor in spite of all the King of Hearts has done for him, tenders his resignation and protesting against the impotence and decadence of the kingdom, removes his red garter, worn by all in the royal palace, garbs himself in black, and prepares to cross over to a rival kingdom. Or, if I'd chosen a different card, the white knight, wearing as always his visor, greets the king of hearts with all the deference due him, concealing the secret malice he bears him and his intimate knowledge of the queen's private matters and tells him that the court jester has been overheard mocking his highness's potency with a rude song about a creamless tart that had gone missing. Um, so the reason I mentioned that story, um, which some people would say is gimmicky, but I really enjoy gimmicks, but the reason I mention it is because I, I like to keep an eye out for existing texts that can be repurposed for fiction. Um, obviously in this case it's all the hearts from a pack of cards, but it could be, um, you know, it could be like a phone book or it could be a GCSE exam or it could be a dictionary or it could be an email thread or it could be a housing benefit application form or it could be the instructions for a board game. And these can be really fun not always successful, but usually enjoyable ways to just come at writing a short story from a different angle. Like the other day, I thought about, um, you know, workplace accident report forms. Um, so I, I ordered online a couple of these accident books, uh, workplace accident books, to see if they might provide an interesting form for a story. And actually, I think they it, it could be really good. Like if you if you look at this accident report, it's cut up into sections. It begins, you know, name, address, occupation, uh, date, and then it says, how did the accident happen? Please give as much information as possible. Please describe any injuries suffered by the person who had the accident. Section B, please provide details of any actions or recommendations taken to avoid a similar occurrence happening in the future. Um, and 
anyway, it's actually really hard to write a story like that. And I, I did try it and it didn't work, but um, it's, it's fun. And I have had some stories that worked that way. So that's it. Those are three uh, places you might get ideas from. There are obviously many millions of others, including following your muse, if you have one. Um, but I hope you find that helpful. Thank you.